Hi, and welcome back to the channel, where we do fun things with Swift, Swift UI, iOS development, everything related to it. In today's video, I would like to show you how you can use the preview modifier that was introduced for iOS 18 and Xcode 16 to decorate and improve the way that you build your Swift UI previews in your projects. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now. And of course, don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed watching this video. The preview modifier that was added in Xcode 16 allows us to decorate views that we've put into our previews. This means that we could apply borders to them or change their styling or all these things, or we could use these preview modifiers to actually inject things into the environment for our previews. An example that Apple uses is you could use it to set up a Swift data model context that you add to your previews environment with mock data in it. It's very useful for that. And in this video, I will show you exactly how to use preview modifier. So let's dig into our demo. So what we have here is just a plain preview in Swift UI. And what I'd like to do is to show you two separate things. First, I would like to show you how to define a preview modifier and how we can use a preview modifier to decorate our existing view. So that would mean that we decorate whatever we are previewing. And what I'll do to make this example a little bit more realistic is I'll go on ahead and define a struct. Uh, my sample view here is going to have a body, some view, and it's going to be a V stack that contains an image. And we'll use a system image for that. Um, whichever one we like most, let's pick a random one, we'll scroll, scroll, and we're going to use, well, square and arrow is kind of boring. Let's use this one, a person. So we'll use person as our image, and we'll also add a text, and we'll name it profile, right? That kind of fits the person theme. And we'll put our sample view in the preview. So right now what we have is a project that does not build. Why does it not build? Because we didn't conform the sample view to the protocol. There we go. So now we actually have our preview right here. Let me go on ahead and zoom that in just a little bit. So here's what our sample looks like right now. So let's imagine that for my preview, I want to, I don't know, change the foreground color or something like that. I'm pretty sure that you could come up with something a lot more creative. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and put a foreground color on my sample view through a preview modifier. So I will make an orange foreground preview modifier. And I'll do that by defining a struct and conforming that to the preview modifier protocol. The preview modifier protocol has two methods that we can implement. One is a function body that takes our original content. So in this case, it would be my sample view and a context. This context is um, created by an optional make context method that for now we won't implement. So I'm just going to go on ahead and define function body. It's going to take content and a context. And because we don't specify a context explicitly, the context is going to be of type void. Content is a generic that we don't need to specify. So what I can do here is actually take my content, which is a Switch UI view, and it's going to be whatever we put into our preview. And I can actually give it a tint. For example, I'm going to give it tint color dot orange. And I'm returning that implicitly from this function. So whenever we apply this preview modifier to a preview, what's going to happen is whichever view we're previewing is going to have an orange tint applied to it. So I can actually take my preview right here and pass my preview modifier through traits. And I can pass the traits argument to the preview macro, and I can say dot modifier, and then pass an instance of my orange foreground modifier. And now the preview will actually apply that orange modifier whenever we run it. It looks like I did something wrong here because my foreground color is not being applied. So let's actually also apply a border to check that things are actually being applied here. Uh, color.orange border. There we go. 
And there we do have the border. So I guess the tint is not what we we're looking for. We we're probably looking for something like foreground style actually uh, to give me an orange color here. There we go. All right, and we can also make sure that we have a padding to make that border look better. And ultimately we can actually just do whatever we want here. So maybe we also wanted to have a navigation stack around our preview. And we can do that right here. You could even set a navigation title, sample, and then that title will actually just show up here. All right, so this is pretty cool and allows us to do a lot of generic kind of styling for previews because now we can apply the orange foreground color to any Sochi UI preview that we want. It's not tailor-made for my sample here. And I'm sure that you can come up with way more creative uses of why you would want to wrap or decorate your, your Swift UI previews. This is just a little example to show you that you can apply view modifiers, wrap your view in something else and all these things. Now note that you're getting an instance of your view that is fully prepared. So you can't make another instance of your view or you could if you wanted to, but you really shouldn't. Um, so you can't really change the parameters that go into your view, but you can definitely change the look of your view and how it's styled and what it's wrapped in and all these things. Now, you can, you can use a context to make further changes to your view. So I'm going to go on ahead and do something a little bit silly where I will actually have my uh, preview modifier contain a static make shared context. And this shared context is going to return a SwiftUI color uh, that we'll use to inject a random color into our uh, SwiftUI view. So I actually take the, let's see, hue, saturation, brightness, um, view modifier, and I'll set hue to zero point or to a random number, let's see, double dot random in zero through one. And I'll apply that to each and every one of my arguments here. All right, so we're going to take a random color and we want that color maybe to become the border for our view or to be used inside of our view. So this view is actually going to define its own foreground color. So that foreground color is going to overwrite whatever I did in my preview. So I'll actually remove it from there. So for now, I'll make it red just to show you that it's being used. Maybe red is not different enough from orange. I'll use purple right, just to make it clear that we're using that. I'll actually get rid of the border. I'll leave the border. I'll just get rid of this foreground style right here. All right, so now we have this purple profile image and text. And we want to get this um, color into our view. Now, sadly, we can't make a new instance of our view, so we can't modify this view in that sense. But if we were to add this to the environment, for example, we could actually change the color of our view. So we could make use of the new entry macro, let's say extension, environment values, at entry var my color. Uh, or actually, we don't even need to inject it into the environment here, but we could inject it into the environment using at entry var my color. Uh, color and the default would maybe be color dot uh, purple. And we could inject this uh, random color into the Swift UI environment. That's where we're going to make our context the type color because that's what we return here. And now I can actually say foreground style uh, context. Uh, that's form style, I mean foreground style. And then we'll apply that right here. And so now we should be getting a random color if we remove this right there. And so now you can see we get green. And if we change something in our view, we'll get a different color, right? So every time this preview renders, we get a new color. Now what is pretty cool is if we add multiple previews here, they should all get the same color. 
if this works as advertised. And it doesn't. All right, so Apple promises that this context is going to be reused and we can see that it's not being reused in the sense that we can have multiple previews compiling and running um, side by side. So that's a little bit weird. Uh, I wonder if it's a beta bug. I noticed that we run our make shared context every single time, which I guess is not a big deal, but yeah, Apple should probably fix the wording on the documentation on what they mean with this being a shared context because I'm not seeing it being shared right now. In any event, we currently saw that I can actually apply a foreground style based on a random generated context. You can imagine that I could also return a model context here with predefined Swift data data or with other mock data that you might want to add to your view. The tricky part is that you can't make new instances of your views, so you're going to have to inject it either through an existing view modifier or through the views environment. Right, so if I wanted to use this my color that I have here, I could actually say environment slash dot my color, and that will get the value of whatever's in my context. Then inside of my view, I can grab my color and actually apply this um, foreground style like this. And now we'll actually be using whatever we put into the environment. And basically this allows us to make changes to our views rather conveniently. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's not the perfect way to mock anything and everything in your apps. It is a nice way to change the environment and to decorate your views. So I'm excited that we have this preview modifier because I sure have been wrapping views in my previews just so that they would look in a certain way or that they would contain navigation stacks that were set up in a certain way. And so now we can actually abstract that into a preview modifier that we can reuse across previews, which is quite convenient. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you learned something. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like and the subscribe button so that you're always up to date for future videos. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.